what happens when you give the director of Ghost of Yutsuya, a very well done movie with great production values and that sort of thing, um, a buck ninety five and a ham sandwich, or in this case, one hundred ninety five yen and an onigiri, and tell him that the studio is on the verge of bankruptcy and I need you to make a horror film. Well, you get Jigoku. The film will be covering for a second of our horror films this week, this month. A dark, grim, surreal, and truly nightmarish film. Our film's protagonist is Shiro, who has no last name given. He is a young college student who is due to marry Yukiko, the daughter of his professor, Mr. Yajima. After taking a ride home with his friend, their relationship is generally hostile, uh, Tamura, they end up taking a shortcut and hitting a drunk Yakuza who's wandering in the road. Um, Shiro wants to stop and check on the victim, but his friend Tamara refuses, and they ended up proceeding on anyway. Things proceed to get worse and worse from there, with more and more deaths unfolding over the course of the film. Some, but not all of the dead, having their own dark secrets that come out in and around their deaths. Some of them are related to friends, family, and peers of Shiro. Some are also just related to the friends and family of the Yakuza. All of this comes to a head around an anniversary party at the retirement home that Shiro's parents run. But we're not close to the end of the film yet. As through, do, through a cascading series of consequences related to everything in the film thus far, everyone ends up dead, and they all, in turn, end up in hell. Not Christian hell, but the Buddhist hell, Jugoku, or hell's Jugoku. And there we, in turn, end up following the characters to the various torments of Jap of Buddhist hells, but the Japanese Buddhist hells, um, relevant to the sins that they committed in life. Now, like a film I re reviewed earlier, the Shaw Brothers film Heaven and Hell, this is a film that actually has a fairly modest budget, and both end with depictions of hell. But Heaven and Hell is a empowerment film. It is characters going into hell, fighting against tremendous odds, and coming out, and achieving reincarnation into a, to a better life. Jigoku, however is much more surreal in its depiction and much more dour and dark in its de in, in the ultimate finale of the work. And I think a part of this is due to the fact that Shintoho, the studio who made this and also made Ghost of Yatsuya, was so close to bankruptcy that rather than the more involved sets for hell that we get in Heaven and Hell, because it's Shaw Brothers at their peak, Instead, here, the sets for hell are basically a heavily shadowed soundstage with a dirt floor and several holes dug for use for the particular gags in the, se in the sequence. In turn, for that matter, I also say that this, the tone probably colored by the fact that the studio where all these people had invested considerable amounts of their careers at was likely going to close. And it's borne out in the very definite sense of finality. There's no... There's, there's none of that hope for a cheerful reincarnation or a cheerful next life where everything is going to work out in this film, the way things turn out here. Jigoku is a dark, bleak, cynical, and very dour film, but one that's executed tremendously well and honestly, I think, should be remembered as one of the best works of Japanese horror cinema. Um, one of the... Greatest films come out of Shin, um, Shintoho, and honestly, something should be considered in the same light as one of the, some of the more modern works of J-horror, like, you know, The Ring and Dark Water. Now, this film has received a physical release from the Criterion Collection, and as this recording is able for streaming on the Criterion channel, links to the show notes, physical media release are is a... Uh, affiliate link.
thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. 